This is a little demonstration I want to show you. It's not related directly to the lab that we just did, but it uses some of the same equipment so you'll now be able to understand it. So I have now two, I have one oscilloscope, like we had before, and the function generator, but now I've got two function generators, and I'm going to feed a signal from both function generators into the oscilloscope. Now to do that I need to connect the BNC connectors for output here and input here. So this is what we did before. I've got this input going into the oscilloscope. Here, let's turn this on. And we'll turn on the function generator. But then I've got a second channel on the, on the oscilloscope. So I'll put a second adapter here. And then I'll have the output from the other function generator coming in here. And I can turn this on too. Now you can see, I don't know, can you see? We've got the input from both of these. We've got two little waves here. I'm going to move this camera into position so you can get a better view of the screen. Let's see if this works. That's a little better. And you can see the frequency on both function generators on either side. So you've got the idea of the layout. Now, I've got two inputs, so I've taught two, two signals, sine waves. It's drawing on one of them. Let's see if we can figure out which one it is. If I change the frequency, the one that moves around is the one I'm changing. It's triggering on the one on the right, which means it retraces the, the signal from the one on the right over and over again, and the other one gets out of phase. If I adjust this, this one, you can see. And in fact, what I can do here, let's. Move this one down. And this one up. So number one is on the top. That's input one. And number two is on the bottom. If I. Get them close to the same frequency. You should see them line up. If I can get it to just freeze at the exact same frequency, which is not easy to do there. We're very close. I'll go to fine adjustment. I'm at 2005 hertz here and 2007 hertz there. Oh, it's very close. But what's happening is it's redrawing the bottom one. It's triggering on number two. It's redrawing this over and over again. And then at the same time, whatever time it is, it's drawing that one, but it's a little bit out of phase. OK, well, that's nice. But what I wanted to show you is there's another way to display this. Instead of drawing where the horizontal is a time sweep, I can f uh, and the vertical is the voltage of either channel one or channel two, or both. We're seeing both. I can feed channel 1 into the X and channel 2 into the Y just by selecting, let's see, over here, oh you can't see it, in the time division, in the horizontal section, main delayed and push XY, there. Now what it's doing is it's, it's oscillating in X, uh, the, the channel 1 is doing the X and it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's oscillating in Y, the, uh, close to the same frequency, up and down, up and down, up and down. And if I can get them at exactly the same frequency, I can get it to freeze. Nope. And you, the more chaotic there, if I get a circle or even an ellipse, then I've got them at exactly the same frequency. And these are called Lissajous figures. And they're used for calibration. You might take a very nice 
fi a function generator along for the calibration and compare it to some other voltage, uh, voltage reference. It's going to be tough to, there. If I get it to freeze, and it may look like it's rotating around. Now, you don't just do this when there's, the frequencies are the same. You can actually get more interesting uh, um, patterns when they're in integer multiples. So instead of, uh, well, let's turn this one down. I don't know if I can do this. Okay, channel one is at 2,000 hertz exactly. Channel two is 2006, five, four, three, two, there. Oh, I had it just, my finger on the dial makes it change. These are not the best function generators, but they'll do. So what I'm gonna do is take the, the one on the right, channel two, to go up to 3,000 hertz. So now it's going much more quickly. Ah, there we go. And it's very close again, 3002, 3001, 3000. And this is a Lissajous figure. And if I can get them exact multiples, it'll freeze. But when they're not quite exact multiples, they come very close to each other when they retrace their steps. As the vertical goes around and the horizontal goes around, they come to almost the same position that they were in before. And so it's like a computer animation or a, or a cartoon animation because you, what you're seeing over and over and over again very quickly are small changes. And in fact, if you look at this there, it looks like it's actually something rotating in three dimensions. That's an optical illusion. And here, let, can I uh, increase the amplitude? of the Y to make this bigger, and I'll position the Y. I'll lift it up a little bit to get it in the picture. I can move things over offset. So that shows you they're very close, and it looks like something going round and round in three dimensions. That's a, a two to one ratio. And if I go up to, let's see, and, and you can find integer multiples where it freezes. There, that's 3,200 to 2,000. So that's a 20 to 32, or 10 to 16, or 5 to 8 ratio. And if you, if you could get it to freeze, you could count the number of maxima in the x direction and the y direction. And they, oh, there, we're getting very close, very close. So we, we don't do this in this lab, but there is, we had scheduled demonstrations at the end of the semester, and we're going to skip that. This would have been one of them. And they're called Lissajous figures. So I thought that might be some interest to people.